Oh, right. Sounds on. <laughs> Let's have a rewind. What I was saying was this. You saw a picture of uh, Ross Greve come up there. Very, very good friend of ours who uh, gave me a call tonight. On a, well, he gave me a messenger. Uh, a message came through basically to say, what veterans charity is it that you uh, are associated with? Because we'd like to raise some money for it with our VE celebrations coming up with my um, football and cricket club that he's associated with. He's the chairman. They've decided they're going to raise money for the veterans charity. And that is this one just here. The Veterans Charity, who are like the um, rapid response charity for veterans in need. So, Ross, I just want to give you a shout out, mate, saying thank you so much. I've let Danny know that uh, you're going to be doing it. Uh, you're going to make a big difference. However, however much you raise is going to make a big, big difference. But, right, getting back to the matter in hand, now that the uh, sound is working, let's talk about the uh, the printing. I'm going to do a, a, like an overview of what we covered last week. A very, very quick overview, but I want to kind of throw in these extra little bits of information which are going to make a massive, massive difference. So, first of all, let's just have a quick recap. Uh, what, print, what monitor am I using? All right, so first of all, the monitor that I'm using is this one here. It's a BenQ, uh, it's a 32 inch monitor, and I kind of went through what the spec uh, is about this thing here, but one thing that I really love about it is the fact that the screen hasn't got any kind of shine on it whatsoever. It's got a real matte kind of finish to it, so I'm not gonna be influenced by any light hitting that screen and causing kind of reflections and whatever, so I love it, absolutely love it. Uh, yes, I am associated with BenQ, but I was using their stuff beforehand. So whatever monitor you're using, you're going to want to get it calibrated. Now, the calibrator that I tend to use, there's a, there's a couple that you could use. Now, I'm going to go, and throw, uh, go through and show you how I use this one here. This is the i1 Studio. The reason I like this one is because this one will not only calibrate my screen, but it'll also allow me to profile my papers. And we'll talk about that in a moment. You do have options when it comes to getting profiles for your papers. But you're gonna, I'm hoping you're really gonna see why, at the very least, you need to send off to get them. Not download them, but to actually send off a test print to get some done. So there's this one here. Other ones that you could use, things like, this is an i1 Display Plus here, does the same kind of thing, but this, although it does a great job calibrating your screen, it is limited to that. So you can't do your profiles, uh, your paper profiles, but you could send off for them. So that's a great bit of kit. Obviously quite a difference in price, depending on what kind of commitment you want to make to it. But at the very least, you want to do that because that is, calibrating your screen is a vital part of this process. If you don't do it, it ain't going to work no matter what you do, all right? The other little thing I want to tell you about before we get into the, the, the settings and stuff that you need to do, because I'm really going to make this so so incredibly simple. You're going to be like, is that all I need to do to get my prints working? Uh, the printer. What printer do you use? Now, this is the one that I currently use. I am going to be getting a larger format printer when we move. Uh, I got this one because I'd kind of backed off from doing a lot of prints in the past because I just couldn't get it right. Uh, but last year, made the commitment, got this, and I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. Now, when it comes to printers... You know, we're going to go through what kind of settings that you need to, uh, settings, that, well, I keep doing that, <laughs> settings that you need to uh, put into your, um, you know, to create these profiles, whatever, to put into your printer to print stuff out. However, if you are using a printer that is like the one over my shoulder just here, this little Epson thing just over there that I generally use just for doing like printing out Word documents and labels and stuff like that, it's only got four inks in it. If you're expecting a four ink printer to print your images so that they look the same in the print as they do on the screen, you're in a different world. There is no way that's going to happen. The printer that I've got there, that's a 10 ink system. There's the one I want to get after that is like a 12 or a 15 ink system, I think it is. The reason there's all those different colors in there is so that the print the prints do have and can cope with all that different tonal range within your image. A four ink printer isn't going to cut it. All right. So that's just one thing that I wanted to say there. So, right, let's just let's just dive straight in and talk about what we need to do. So we're talking about the calibration. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna put something up on the screen now, and you might not like this, but this is true, all right? This. If your prints are too dark, your monitor isn't calibrated correctly. That is it. There is no ifs, no buts. It's as simple as that, all right? So what is it about the calibration that we need to do? Now, I showed you, um, let's have a, I'll go to my desktop now. 
that when I do my calibration, I tend to use this software here. I use the X-Rite um, calibrators, so I use the X-Rite software, and I've got the i1 Studio. Now, my BenQ monitor does come, uh, they do actually provide some software called Palette Master, which is their calibration stuff, but I'll be honest with you, the, my, my mindset is if I want my calibration hardware to work at its optimum, then I will use the software that was created for that piece of hardware, all right? But let's have a quick look at this. So no matter what software and hardware you're using, you're gonna find that pretty much the settings are gonna be the same, they just might be in a different place or they might be called something different, but it's gonna pretty much be the same kind of thing. So let me just dive over to where it says display calibration just here. Now we're not gonna go through the whole process of doing it, but it's just the settings that I wanna show you because if I don't know how clear that's gonna be at the moment, the most important one here is the luminance, all right? Let me just actually show the video I showed last week. Very short one. This is where my luminance value, as it zooms in, you'll see my luminance value there is a value of 90. Now, with the luminance, the main thing to remember here is the higher the number the luminance, you're gonna use that when a room is really, really bright. So if I was in a room that had lots and lots of light, it was like proper nuclear in here, I'd probably take the luminance value to 120 or even higher. So that the, that basically means that luminance value is coping with the environment that it's in. Now, because my room, I don't generally work in a room that is particularly bright. I've got daylight balanced bulbs, but I do like to have the lights quite dim and I've got a blackout blind as well with a window to my right. So my room is quite dark, so my luminance value needs to be lower, okay? So my luminance, last time when you saw uh, the last presentation we did, the luminance value, as you can see on screen now, was 90. Now, since we did that one last time, I've now changed it. My luminance value now is 80. All right, so I've dropped it down even more to 80. Now, for when I'm actually, you know, using the using the screen, even when I'm not doing prints, taking that luminance value, the brightness value, if you like, of that screen still looks fantastic when I'm just using it for browsing the web and all that kind of stuff. It still looks great. In fact, in the room environment I'm in now, it looks bang on, all right? So my luminance value needed to be lower. Now, why have I lowered it? And why has that made such a big difference? I'll show, you, I'll show you it on the screen in a moment, but if you did see the last presentation, you'll remember that once we'd done the calibration, once we'd profiled the paper, we then jumped into Lightroom to do the printing, okay? And you might remember that there was a couple of settings that I changed at the very, very end, brightness and contrast. Now, because I've changed the luminance value of my screen, I no longer have to do that. No more guesswork. It is absolutely bang on, all right? So that's that there. Now, let me just take you through a couple of little extra little videos here. You'll remember that once um, we then started to do the calibration process, we talked about where the calibrator needs to be situated. Ideally, you're going to probably want to put it, like you can see on my screen here, with my calibrator pretty much in the middle of the screen. Now, again, this isn't an advert for BenQ or anything like that, but this new monitor I'm using, the luminance value across the whole screen is pretty much damn accurate across the whole screen. So if I put it in the middle, if I put it in the top left, bottom right, wherever, the brightness and the tonal range and whatever is gonna be exactly the same. Some screens may be of a brand that, you know, cheaper maybe. It's like one of those things, isn't it? That you buy cheap, you buy twice. If a, if a screen isn't really up to it, you're gonna find that wherever you put that calibrator, it's gonna give you slightly different readings. So put it right in the middle, all right? Put it right in the middle, because that's generally where your pictures are gonna be when you're working on them, isn't it? In the middle of your screen. So once we've got that position, we then went through the whole process of doing the calibration. Again, this is going to be pretty much standard for whatever it is that your uh, software and hardware you're using. You'll get to the process where you start to do this. The first thing that the X-Rite software does, it checks the contrast of the screen. And that's what it's kind of doing right now. You can just about make out there's a few variations in it. And obviously now you can see the red and what have you. Now, once it's done that, it does the contrast, then it checks the white point. And you get these three bars, um, which kind of remind me of Knight Rider. I remember years ago, you had like three bars when Kit was talking. Maybe that's just me. But you, you want to ideally have three ticks where the orange bar is going to be right across the middle. And that's going to say, yep, yeah, your contrast, your white point is bang on. Now, if you can adjust the red, green, and blue values on your monitor by pressing buttons, that is when you'd probably alter them now to make it so that you get three ticks. 
If you can't, the software will work it out what it needs to change that white point value to be so that it's accurate. So you do that, then you would click next. It would then check uh, the brightness value of your screen. Now you remember before that I put my uh, luminance value, the value that I want, I want it to be 80. So when it takes a reading, it'll tell me what the target white uh, luminance value is, and it'll then say what the actual measured luminance value is. And then you would just adjust, if you had to, the brightness up or the brightness down so that you got that orange bar right across the middle and a nice green tick. So that's saying, yep, yeah, you've now lowered the luminance, the brightness value of your screen to what you wanted it to be to match the room and the environment that you're working on it in when you're doing all your stuff. All right, so that's that. And then after that one, you would then go through the process. Once you've done all those little bits, the contrast, the white balance, and the brightness value, it would then go through and start to do all the color patches. Okay, it would kind of do the readings. And that's pretty kind of standard. Once it's done that, your job's a good one. All right, that's the kind of done that stuff, sort of stuff there. Right, so, so that's that, all right? Just a quick overview about what we did with the calibrating of the screen. But like I said, the most important thing is this. If you find that your prints are too dark, it's because your luminance value of your screen is too high. End of, all right? What you do not want to be doing, really, and it kind of contradicts what we did last week, but I want to kind of bring it up a little bit here and kind of show you extra little stuff that I'm learning about all this, because now I was happy last week. I am ecstatic now with prints, and I'll show you why in a short while. But it really is, if you if your things aren't working correctly, your luminance value, 99.9% .9 of the time, is too high, so you need to bring it down. All right, so now that we've done that, right, so we'll go through the whole calibration process. Once we've done that, we're then going to start looking at uh, profiling the papers. Now, last week I did say to you, you've got, you've got choices. You can buy your papers just like I do here, the papers that I use. I tend to use Permajet, not sponsored by them, not affiliated with them. I just like their stuff. Uh, because actually, to be honest with you, the person I met when I was at a show was really nice on the Permajet stand. So... That goes a long way. Being nice goes a long way. So I now use their uh, use their stuff. So when you when you choose whatever papers it is that you want to use, it might be the Canon papers if you're using a Canon printer. It might be you know Hana Mule. It might be Permajet. It might be whatever sort of papers that you want to use. You do have the option of downloading a profile for that paper to put into whatever software you're using, like Lightroom. Print it. Jobs are good. And but like I kind of said last week. That has never worked for me. Never in a million years has, worked, has it worked for me. And, it, and it, I don't think it really would do. Because let's think about this logically. You know, I've calibrated my screen to my environment. I then download a profile for a certain paper to print an image from my computer. But that profile for that paper to tell my computer how to behave and what have you has been created by a completely different person on a completely different printer to get these values and what have you. So how could that possibly give me the correct results? It might be okay, but for me, it, it certainly wasn't, but it's never going to be nailed. So you've got two options there then. If you're not going to do that, which I wouldn't advise you do, you do what you want, but I'm going to advise you not to do that. You've got two choices, and that is to have bespoke paper profiles, okay? And you can either send off for them or do them yourself. Now, if you're gonna send off for them, exactly, for example, here we've got Permajet, okay, Permajet, I'll go onto their website and they will create ICC or these paper profiles for you. They contacted me after the last video and we're kind of talking about this, saying that they are incredibly proud of the, the kind of uh, profiles they create, pretty damn accurate. And I'm in the middle of testing it just out of curiosity, to be honest with you. But what you would do is they would send you a file, like a, a, a grid of square, color grid. You'd, you'd, uh, you'd print it, and then you'd post that to them, then they'd create a profile from it. And that's great, but obviously with that comes the limitations of the fact that you might want to do the printing now, but you've got to do a print, send it off, wait for it to come back, and all that kind of stuff. Well, they'll send you like a profile in an email. I personally like to have complete control over this. That's why I brought the printer. I, I want to see the process through the whole thing from capture, edit, print. I want, to, I want to do all that myself because then I'm the only one to blame if it all goes wrong. All right. So let's talk then about 
the paper profiles, all right? How do we create these paper profiles? And I wanna kinda, of, let's just dive back. Let's go back onto my screen here. Let's go back to home. And um, I'm now gonna dive over, to, again, to the process that I showed you last week when we were doing the creation of the paper profiles. So the process would be, I would click on color print, and then you get this kind of grid here, all right? On the left-hand side, this is when it, or you choose the printer that you want to use, choose the paper size. I would suggest if you're gonna be printing these grids out to scan, if you're going to be doing that yourself, do it on an A4 piece of paper as opposed to an A3, you know, because you know obviously you're going to be using a lot more ink and a lot more expensive paper if you print it out on A3. So just do them an A4, all right, uh, and then give it a bit of a description, and then you're going to press print. But this is the important thing. This is probably the well, this is it. This is the second of the golden nuggets, all right. If I press print now, when I press that. And again, it might kind of vary with, with your own system, but you'll, you'll have the option now to choose the printer and go into the printer preferences. All right, so I'm now choosing the Canon Pro 10S, and I'm gonna click on preferences for this particular printer. And this is the preferences now that, uh, so I can decide now, because one thing we need to remember is that our printer driver will also influence color, because it's got like its own kind of profile built into it. So I need to kind of tell it Listen, I want to print out these colored squares without any influence from anything. I just want to see what you print them out like completely raw and untouched. So I need to tell the printer, do not do anything to this except for printing it. All right. So I go into the preferences. Now you might find if you're using the Canon, it'll say standard. Now we're doing photo printing. So we're going to click on photo printing. I'll turn off borderless. I don't really like to do that. But then this is one here. It says color and then forward slash intensify manual adjustment. If I double click on that, it brings up this manual adjustment. And then there's a tab here called matching. And you see here it says color correction. Now by default, it says driver matching, which means that the printer itself, the driver for this printer is going to apply some kind of an adjustment, some kind of a color profile as it's printing it all out. We don't want it to do that. So what I'm going to do is choose none. So there's absolutely no influence whatsoever. And I'll click OK. Now I think this bottom bit here, now when I say this, I think this is more, I don't think I'm on my own when it comes to this, but this is where I think the printing gets confusing or potentially can get confusing because we've done all this correct here. We've chosen photo printing. We've told the printer not to do any color management at all, but now we're being asked what media type. And this is where, again, it might just be me. I then started to think, hold on a second. It's asking me what paper I'm using. Does that mean it's going to apply like a profile to that paper? Is it all built in? Now, it's not, all right? The only reason for this bottom section here where it says media type is so that you can tell the printer what kind of paper is coming through it so that the printer knows how much ink it needs to use to put onto that piece of paper to get a good print, all right? It's kind of like, I was trying to think of uh, how could I... Uh, equate this to something else. I guess, in a way, imagine now, okay, imagine now you've got a piece of white cotton, for example, a nice piece of uh, white cotton. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna stretch that out uh, so it's nice and flat and stretched out like this. And I can see the top and I can see the bottom. And in my hands here, I've got a little dropper full of ink. And I'm gonna drop a little bit of ink onto that cotton. And I want to be able to see the ink coming through the inside, uh, from the underside. Now, as I drop that ink onto it, I might not see it, so I might need to add a little bit more ink and eventually I can see it. Now, if I had a thinner piece of cotton just stretched across it, maybe even a piece of toilet tissue or something like that, and I drop the ink onto it, it's gonna take less ink hitting that paper for me to be able to see it coming through the reverse side. Does that make, make, make sense? So this bit at the bottom here is purely so that you can tell your printer this is the paper that's coming through so you know how much ink it needs to uh, put down to get a good print. And of course, if we're paying our money for our printers here, we wanna make sure we would set it to high, all right? So photo printing, turn off the color management here. So make it sure it says none. Choose the paper that you want to use, 
choose print quality high and then click OK. Now, let me just dive back to me just for a second because this, again, is something else that's really relevant. You might find that, as I did, when it comes to uh, you get your papers and you're just all excited to do your print, so you, you score the box open, you get it out, you feed it into a printer, you go through all this kind of stuff and you press print and you're like, yeah, it's okay, it's kind of looking all right. Slow down is what I would say, because within that box, you're going to probably find a piece of paper that looks like this. This is the, the piece of paper that's within the Permajet uh, piece of paper. Uh, uh, sorry, the Permajet box. And what this piece of paper does, it, this is like seriously important. In fact, it's so important, if I'll just bring this here, I now keep these in a plastic folder. They're all the same, but I just keep in case I lose one. And what this piece of paper does here, it tells you it's got a list on one side of lots and lots and lots of all the different papers that Permajet uh, produce. Now, it then says, okay, if you're going to use something like Permajet's FB Gold Silk, okay, this is what you need to tell the printer to use or to a similar kind of paper to use because when we go to media type, can you see that if here, it doesn't say Permajet FB Gold Silk. Oh, I'm just over there. When we dive into here, it doesn't say Permajet FB Gold Silk. So what this piece of paper does, uh, what have I got here? That's what I mean, yeah. So what this piece of paper does is tells you if you're going to use Permajet FB Gold Silk, then in the drop down menu there, you want to use, it say here, photo paper plus semi gloss. So that will basically tell the printer how much ink to lay down. Does that make sense? Because you know, a lot of times people think that when it comes to choosing the media type here, that in there they will see the profiles for their paper. That's never going to happen. The only things you're going to see in here are what Canon loads in with its own particular driver for the Canon papers. There are some kind of like alternatives it gives you here, like fine art papers, but this is basically Canon saying, if you're using a non-Canon paper, then check with your paper manufacturer to say which one of ours it recommends you use when you're printing, all right? Does that make sense so far? <laughs> So what, what differences have we made? Okay, when we think about the, the one we did last week, what differences have we done this time? Number one is we've changed the luminance value of our monitor. We've lowered it, all right? The next thing we've done, when we printed out those colored grids, in fact, let me just show you, what video is it here? Number six, I think it is. These colored grids here that we're now going to scan, we've done it with no color management whatsoever, all right? The printer's printing them out raw. And as it's doing that, in the software, you'll see that each line is then kind of like scored through to say you had a successful scan. Now, what's interesting with this is, when you look at these, uh, these grid here, where it gets this horizontal line, or sorry, diagonal line appearing through it as it does a successful scan, what that's basically telling you is this. In the top left hand, is what you should have, okay? That's the color you should have on the print. The bottom right of that diagonal line is what the value of the color is that you actually have, that you printed out. So the printer and the software now go, ah, right, I know what you should have had, i.e. top left. This is what you're actually getting, top right. So I now need to know what kind of profile I've got to make so that you do get what you should get. All right, so we do that, and then we kind of go through uh, the second scan. We get the uh, the second scan, so we get two. You'll do the first one, you'll scan it, then you do the second one, and then you get your profile created, and that's what you then put into Lightroom to then do your print. But let's give you a quick break from my voice. I'll show you a quick BenQ advert, and then we'll dive into Lightroom for the final fl uh, finishing touch to show how it all comes together. Alrighty, so now we're in Lightroom. All right, so we've done all this stuff. 
Now let's get to the, the crux of the matter here. What we really want to do is get these prints. What on earth do we need to do? Now you might remember, let's see if I can see where this is. Was it number nine? I think I've got to press. Where's my little grid? Yeah, number nine. Right, so last week when I showed you that we printed this out, this was the print settings within Lightroom. So you can see that um, the color management section there, I'm choosing the profile of the paper that I created. All right. And then where it says print adjustment, you notice there that I had to increase it by plus 20. And then because I was using a fine art paper, which is kind of like got a lot of texture into it there, I needed to boost the contrast. Now that is not the case anymore. All right, not the case anymore. So now when I'm printing, and again, I can't quite zoom into it as it is at the moment, but you'll see they're down in the bottom right hand corner here, pretty much the same settings. Um, resolution 300, print sharpening. I don't tend to add that. You, some people do, but I tend to just leave it. Uh, but in the color management section here, here you can see I've got my particular profile. I've got a number of different profiles here. FB gold silk, portrait rag and portrait white. Uh, for a quick uh, refresh for those from uh, last week, if you don't know where your paper profile goes, once you've created it, if you just click other, it'll bring up the actual area within your computer to say, here's all your paper profiles, you would just simply put a tick next to the one that you want and click OK, and it would then bring it back over into here. Now, uh, so that's the um, portrait rag is the paper that I'm going to be using. The intent here, you've got uh, perceptual or relative. Relative is the best choice to use if what you're printing has colors that are within that range of that gamut range. If you've got uh, an image that's got like seriously wacky, crazy, far out kind of colors in it, you're going to want to go for perceptual. But pretty much most of the time for your normal kind of photography, you're going to want to kind of uh, go for the relative there. Now, print adjustment. Can you see here? I've got nothing. I've got no brightness, no contrast in there at all. So what I would then do when I'm now going to print this image out, I've got the options at the bottom, print or printer. I'm going to go to printer. All right. This then brings up this little dialog box where I can choose what print I want to use. Obviously, for me, I'm going to be using the Canon Pro 10. Then I would click on Properties. And you've got to do this every time to make sure that the settings haven't kind of reset. Always, always check on this. So, yep, we can see photo printing is what we're set to. The color intensity manual adjustment here has got a tick in it, but let's just double click on the wording to bring up the dialog box and go to the matching section where it says color correction. And you can see here it says none, which is exactly what we want because we only want to be influencing the print by the actual paper profile we've created. If I had left that there, let's just open that back up again actually. If I'd have left it to what it would have been maybe by default where it says driver matching, that's going to cause a bit of a conflict because Lightroom's going to go, right, I know how you want to print this out, so we're going to use your portrait rag profile. Away you go. And it kind of sends it down the line until it gets to the printer. Then the printer goes, hold on a second. We also want to use this. We're going to use this profile as well. So you can imagine if you've got two different profiles competing against each other, you're not going to get the best result. So you only want to use the one that you've spent the time and money creating or buying. Uh, you want to use that profile, not the ones in the printer. So you just tell the printer, do as you're told. Print out using the profile I've created. So turn the color, man color correction in the printer to none and click OK. This is where you would then choose the particular paper. Now, let's just say if I was going to use, let's have a look here, uh, portrait rag, I would then go to that piece of paper from Permajet, read across there to say, right, I want to use this particular brand of paper from Permajet. What does what do you recommend I use from the Canon drop down menu here? It'll tell me I'll choose that. Then we go for print quality high. Then we click OK and we print. It is as simple as that. And I really, when I say that, I really do hope that was simple because once I'd done this, bearing in mind last week, up until last week, I was doing slight adjustments with the um, brightness and the contrast and what have you. When I then did this, I made no adjustments within Lightroom and I thought, right, let's just see how it prints out and check this out. I did, in fact, I can find an image for you. Let's just cancel that. Let's just find you this image. Uh, go to my screen just here. Uh, this one just here. So this is an image I created a while ago. Uh, let's just go to there. And I just, I kind of made this. I just brought some flowers from a florist, put a bit of gray paper behind them, photographed them, then edited it. 
Um, and that print I did without any of the adjustments within the printer driver, just went through the process I've just explained to you. And when it printed it out, I got that. Absolutely no adjustments, let's hope it focuses, no adjustments to it whatsoever. The colors are bang on, the brightness is bang on compared to what I've got on my screen as well, with no extra adjustments in that Lightroom dialog. So I've kind of like just given it the profile, hands off and let it print, and that's what it did. I also printed out the images of the veteran just here. Let's just bring this in. Now, this one here I've got, this small one on this A4, this is uh, on FB Gold Silk. So that paper will, the properties of that paper do add a little bit of warmth to it. But even so, with no adjustments, let's hope that kind of focuses. Let's have a look. It's, it's kind of doing it. Absolutely bang on. I mean, that it does not get better than that when you're printing. I've even printed it onto one of the fine art papers from Permajet. And before I was having to increase the contrast because I was finding that the actual, you know, the texture and the, the sort of extreme mat of this particular paper was drawing out uh, the contrast and all that kind of stuff. But this is it printed out on an A3 with absolutely no extra adjustments to it. That is just the profile that has done it. I mean, look, down in the shadow area, great detail. Skin tone's fantastic. Just, I just simply could not be happier. Could not be happier. I'm, I am absolutely over the moon with it. Um, so yeah, all those years ago when I couldn't do it, and I didn't understand, really, when we think about it, there was only a couple of key things which were completely wrecking it for me. The first one was the brightness, the luminous value of my screen. The other one mainly was to do with the fact that, and it sounds really daft when you say it now, you think, how did you not think of that? I think it's the the way that it's all laid out. The, the dialogue boxes can be confusing. You think you're using a profile when you're not and blah, 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 blah. I was using a profile in Lightroom, but I was also using a profile in the printer. The two of them were giving it that. They were at loggerheads and they're going, right, okay, we'll have that then. If that's what you wanna do, you can have this print. And of course it was rubbish, which is why I stopped doing it years and years and years ago. Thankfully now, no longer the case. It is now absolutely bang on. So I'm really, really hoping that has really helped. I know there's a, a girl in the chat room there called Deb. She recently bought the same printer as me. Uh, and she was kind of getting loads of questions backwards and forwards, understandably, because this is a pretty much a minefield. I'm really hoping, Deb, that that has kind of just kind of clinched it for you so that now you can print with confidence now and you'll get exactly what you want the brightness will be right uh, and all that kind of stuff now if if for some reason when you go to do it your prints are too dark your colors will be good but if your prints are too dark go back and calibrate your screen again but bring down that luminance value if you had it at 100 take it down to 90 if 90 is too bright bring it down to 80. there's obviously going to be a limit to how far you want to bring it down because if you go way down it's going to look like your screen's off but it has to kind of match the environment. If I then started to, if I move from this office, as we are soon, we're you know relocating, and the studio I'm going to be doing my stuff in, if it's brighter, I definitely would have to use a different value of luminance for my screen because I'm in a different room, different brightness, and what have you. So I'd need to recalibrate it, which I do every week anyway. But you know, it's just kind of my luminance value of my screen would have to be higher to to cope with the brightness within the room. All right. So that's that. Um, don't throw the pieces of paper away that you get with your paper. I think somebody mentioned that with Epson, the name of the paper you use is in the name of the permajet. I, I don't know. Have a look through the chat room because somebody uh, mentioned about the fact that permajet give you a hint as to what Epson paper to use when you're using this stuff. I think that's what he said. But uh, no matter what paper you use, if you don't have something within the box that you get the paper, contact the paper provider and they'll tell you, right, this is an equivalent paper that you want to use when you're doing your test prints or when you're printing your main images out. This will tell your printer how much ink to drop onto that page to get the optimum results. All right, so you get the best possible results. Uh, let's have a, just a very, very quick look over in the chat room. We've just got it on the side here. Peter Morgan, I'm going to mention him in a moment. I think your calibrator has an ambient light sensor. It does. Absolutely, it does. Uh, I'm not quite sure how accurate that is. Uh, if I just show this one here, what Peter's on about there is you can actually keep, it's a long old cable. This one in particular, this i1 display plus, you can actually have that constantly plugged in all the time. 
and within the software tell it to do constant ambient light measurements so then it will compensate for your screen and the brightness changes and what have you when it comes to doing your printing uh, because i don't use this as the main one uh, i don't tend to do that but it you know it's a definitely a good option i'd love to hear from somebody who does that to see if it does actually make a massive difference but the i1 studio here doesn't do that uh, but i calibrate pretty much every week and if i've got an you know a, a print that's got to be done that's kind of important then i'll calibrate the whole lot again beforehand before i do that all right, let's have a quick look in here. Uh, Gear, my friend Gear over in the Netherlands. Gear, I won't see you in uh, in the professional imaging show, mate. I'm not going to be there this year, which is a shame. Um, we'll try it with my Epson 9890, the mirror software. Okay, cool. Right, so one thing I will say, I've got a couple of things I want to just kind of finish off with uh, to show you and to tell you about. I've put some notes within the video uh, description part in there because there is somebody whose YouTube channel I highly recommend you check out and also their Facebook page. And it's a guy called Jose Rodriguez, okay? He's a chap in America who is a printing god, all right? What this guy doesn't know about printing isn't worth knowing. And I'll be honest with you, how I got myself sorted with all this was because I checked out, I forget it was who recommended him, but I kind of got into his content a good while back now, and it's because of his stuff that I now know what to do. All right, and I'm now so, so incredibly happy with this. The description, or the link rather to his YouTube channel, I've put into the uh, description part of this video. So it's Jose Rodriguez, absolute legend, real, real star. And you can join his group on Facebook as well. Um, other little things to let you know about. Uh, I am going to be putting this, well, I have put it together, actually. I've created a PDF, which you'll be able to download. My new website will be live. We're expecting to be live this coming weekend. Um, totally different look to uh, the current website. Um, and there's a PDF you can download for free. So it takes you through step by step with screen grabs that you can get to help with the actual print inside of things. So I thought I'd make that one available for you. And also Peter Morgan, who's in the chat room there, uh, he comes under Morgan James Photography for those of you in the chat room. Uh, Peter is a guest on our pod, uh, podcast this week, our He Shoots, He Draws podcast. His episode went live yesterday, uh, and I think it was probably the day before. Me and Peter had a good old chat uh, about some really important stuff, which is called backing up. Now, if you don't back up your work, you're in for a shock, because one day you're going to lose stuff. Because one thing we talk about is the fact that hard drives are in one of two states, failing or failed. All right, so you will, you do not want to lose your stuff. But Peter did an absolutely fantastic job. He's, he's a great photographer anyway, really good guy. Uh, does just, just stupidly good wedding photography. Uh, drone work as well. But his his history is that he's kind of like an IT uh, tech guy. He used to, own, used to own a tech company specializing in uh, data recovery and backup systems. And he goes through what would be the gold standard, okay? What kind of stuff would it be worth um, for the general photographer, okay, to make sure they do backing up? So he not only talks about what is RAID, you know, all these terminology, what is RAID, what is NAS, uh, talking about cloud backing up and all this kind of stuff. He really does simplify it so that it kind of makes sense. But I think, I'm hoping by the end of it, you go, do you know what? I need to take a re-look at my backing up because if it goes wrong, oh, awful, awful. So uh, definitely check him out. Give him a follow as well. Absolute top, top guy. Um, but I think that's it. I will hang around in the chat room for any questions. When the website, the new website goes live, I'm going to put a big blog post on about printing as well. I can't, there's no point in me doing it now because eventually when it does migrate, it won't bring in any recent blog posts uh, that I've done since part of the website was brought up. I don't know. So it's all, this is why we need people like Peter, people who understand this stuff, right? I just kind of point a camera and then work in Photoshop. Um, but that's it. I'll hang around in the, uh, in the chat room. Uh, and that's it. Okay. I really hope that's useful. I really, really do have a watch of it. Have watched the one we did last week. Have a look at this one. And let me know how you get on, all right? Let me know how you get on. Don't just sit in silence. If there's any issues, let us know. Um, but just enjoy your printing, all right? Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, I apologize for not doing it yesterday, but thanks so much for tuning in on a Tuesday evening. I'll love you and leave you, and I'll let you know ASAP what the next one will be. But for now, I'm going to leave you. We've talked about veterans. We've talked about veterans just here, the Veterans Charity. So let's just finish off with the video I showed last time. Uh, of the video, the promo video I've put together for Billy Billingham. So, folks, I'll see you in the chat room. Ta-ra.